All right, I'm recording these on St. Patrick's Day, and I realized I wasn't wearing any green, so I had to go find the old Oregon game day hat. So let's go Ducks. Good deal. All right, now we're finally moving into example three where this gets exciting. I know the first two, you're like, whatever. This, you'll see why it gets exciting. So I've got two equations now, and I have to find the area between them. So that means I have to graph them both. And so I'm going to kind of do that up here. Um, and uh, I'm going to sort of just sketch them, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, this is a parabola that was shifted down three, so again, that just comes down here. It's going to have a vertex right there. The If I were to factor this, it's not factorable in terms of integers, but it, if I were to solve it, my roots would be plus or minus square root of three. I don't really know where those are, but it is perfectly balanced, so I can just zip that guy up there, zip this guy up there, um, and that's this function right there. And I should have probably changed colors, and I apologize for not doing that, but I'm going to do this one, which is also a parabola, which has a y-intercept of negative uh, 1. Again, it's in standard form. I get that straight from that c value. Um, and the other thing I know about this, because this is negative in front, it has to open downward. So what I could do is find the coordinates of the vertex, which again would be that old negative b over 2a. So negative b would be negative 3, over 2a, which would be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So I know the vertex is at like 1 and a half. It's, it's over here somewhere. So that means I know since it opens upside down, this thing's got to go like this somehow and look a little bit like that. So the area I'm trying to find is in between these two guys. So I'm kind of shading that in. So now I have a little bit of extra work on my hands. Uh, first off, notice that the blue is my top function. So I'm just going to write over here. This is on top the whole time. The entire time blue is on top of the black parabola, which means that this is my bottom function. So if I'm going to take the integral and I'm, my goal is always to go top minus bottom, um, this integral would look like a negative x squared plus 3x minus 1 minus, and I'm going to put in the bottom function, which is in parentheses because I have to subtract the whole function. And so I have to subtract x squared and minus 3. So what's going to happen is it's going to become uh, obviously a plus 3 and a minus x squared there. Now my other job is to figure out where in the heck these two points are because those are the lower bound, the left side where these start, and the right side. So this is the new job that we didn't have before. I have to find where these two graphs intersect, so I have to solve uh, a little equation on the side. I have to figure out when does x squared minus 3 equal negative x squared plus 3x minus 1. So I've got to solve this thing. There's It appears to be quadratic. So I'm going to move everything to one side and hope to either factor it or quadratic formula. So I'm going to add that over to this, which is going to give me 2x squared. I'm going to subtract that over, minus 3x. I'm going to add that over. When I add it to that, I'm going to have minus 2. And that all equals 0. So your job now is a perfect quadratic. I could do quadratic formula. Uh, personally, I'm going to try to factor this thing. And if I can factor it, I'll have my 2x intercepts. And so the what makes 2x squared has to be 2x and x. And what multiplies to 2 has to be 2 and 1 if this is going to work. So it's really a game of where do I put the 2, where do I put the 1. So I notice if I put the 2 here, it'll multiply by 4. And if I take 1 away from that, I'll be good to go with this 3. So I'm going to put minus 2 over here and plus 1 right there. And now I just factored it. And my 2x intercepts are negative 1 half and 2. And so my assumption is that this guy over here is my 2. And this guy over here is my negative 1 half. And so I am now integrating from the left side, uh, negative 1 half, up to the right side or over to the right side of 2. And so I've had to do this separate equation to find the bounds in which to integrate. Now, uh, before I actually integrate, I'm going to combine like terms here so that I'm only integrating one function. So I'm just going to write equals, and I'm going to rewrite this. I did all my work to find my lower bound and my upper bound. 
and negative x squared minus x squared is negative 2x squared. And 3x has no like terms, so plus 3x. And negative 1 minus uh, a negative 3 would become negative 1 plus 3, which is plus 2. And I'm going to write my dx there. Now notice that looks very similar to this. And it should because we moved all these guys over. The only difference is these are the exact opposites of those. Um, that, otherwise, that's what happens when you combine like terms. So now I just have to integrate this guy. Again, no trick to that, no u substitution, just straightforward integration. So if I integrate the first piece, I'm going to have negative 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x. And again, I had to evaluate that between 2 and negative 1 half. So that just means I plug in 2 everywhere. Um, and hopefully this, uh, this will work okay for me. When I plug in 2 and cube it, I get 8 times negative 2 is negative 16 thirds. I put a 2 in here, I get 4 times 3 is 12. So 12 over 2 is 6. So forgive me if I'm just skipping some fractions there. I may end up having to go back and make things halves again at some point, but I'm not going to worry about it. And 2 into here makes 4, so plus 4. And again, that's my first set of my upper bound. I am going to shift colors um, because I have to subtract what happens when I plug in negative 1 half. And this is where you're going to have to just believe me a little bit. Now, if I plug in negative 1 half in here, I get negative 1 eighth. And negative 1 eighth times negative 2 is 2 eighths or a quarter. And a quarter divided by 3 is a twelfth, I believe. So I'm um, pretty sure that's right. And then I'm going to plug in negative 1 half in here. Negative 1 half squared is a quarter. Times 3 is 3 quarters. Divided by 2 is 3 uh, eighths. So that would become plus 3 eighths. So actually this is a becoming a fraction nightmare for me. Um, I plug in negative 1 half here. Oh, finally, 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. So that worked out pretty well for me. Now I'm going to combine everything I can, which is basically going to be uh, the 6, the 4, and the 1, because they're all just regular numbers. So 6 plus 4 is 10, minus a negative 1 becomes 11. So I'm taking care of those. That becomes 11. And then everything else doesn't have a common denominator. So I'm going to write minus 16 over 3, minus a 12th, and minus 3 eighths. So notice that I and distributing this minus sign to everything. Now, because of all my fractions, I have to give myself a little more room. Um, and I also notice that I have to get a common denominator. And so between 3, 12, and 8, that common denominator would be uh, 24. So if I have to write everything in terms of 24s, then I even have to write 11 in terms of 24s. And 11 24s is 264 24s. Um, I changed this to a 24, means I had to multiply by 8, and 16 times 8 would give me 128. This one to a 24 is times 2, and this one to a 24 is times 3. And so there we go, everything's over 24. Now I can take 264 minus 128 minus 2 minus 9. If I do all of that, I get 125. 24ths, and that, my friends, is the area between the curves that I drew up above that you can no longer see. So there you go. That was a much more exciting example. Your job now, as you know, is to take a second, pause the video, sketch this graph, find your points of intersection, and integrate. So pause the video, and then you can check it. Pause. All right, video's unpaused. Here's what you should have gotten after going through that. And I'm going to, again, recognize top bottom. This was a little bit nicer for you because that's an equation of a line. So boom, slides through. Parabola's always above it. You set them equal. Find your points of intersection. And you're doing the parabola minus the line. So you got to distribute your subtraction. And then you integrate, plug in, evaluate. And as you go, again, there's almost no way to avoid fractions. In any of these, there's your answer. Nine halves is the area. All right, enjoy the next few moments.